want you to uh, remember the operating and continue to do that. You've been good about that and we very much appreciate it. Hope that you will uh, uh, let other people know of what we're doing, especially in the broadcast. It's a way that we're reaching more people and I hope that uh, you will let them know. A couple of things, uh, prayer concerns that we want to uh, remind you of and let you know if you did not know. Claire Godwin, our drummer, is going to have her knee surgery on Thursday. So please keep her and your family in your prayers. Uh, Nancy Summer uh, continues to recover, as does Paula Patro. Uh, we want to remember Liam Wright and Brad Men, Chuck Adam and Al Key. Uh, certainly the unrest that we've seen in our country. Certainly want to pray for our nation. And uh, Justin is in Afghanistan. Is that right? Justin's character is in Afghanistan. We certainly want to remember him and all those who are serving overseas and uh, those who are serving in the military in any way, especially being away from home on a holiday weekend. Uh, we want you to keep them in your prayers. Let us go to God. Heavenly Father, we, we do seek your help in our world. We see the unrest, we see the difficulties, we see the strife, the wars, fighting, fussing. We see people that are struggling with financial concerns. We see people that have emotional issues. And we know that not everyone is focused on you and your will. We pray that we might be instruments of your peace in this world, that we might make a difference, especially today. We we pray for those who are serving in the military, those who are overseas, uh, those who uh, cannot be with family and friends, cannot celebrate the way that we're able to. But dear God, we pray for your blessings on our nation, on the nation, all the nations of the world, of course. But today we remember our nation and we pray that you would help us to be good citizens, that we would be the people that help make a difference because of our faith, we pray that you would walk with us, show us how to be the church that you call us to be. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
story in today's passage is a familiar one to some people, but it's especially something that I think a lot of people in our country can relate to. People are praying to God in this passage, and I'm going to read to you in just a minute. People are praying to God in this passage and venturing out and going to a new country. And no matter where we're from, our multi-cross nation is a, certainly a tapestry of cultures who have come together seeking a new life. And together we have been able to work towards a more perfect union. Our motto in Corpus Unum, the out of being one. Each of us has a role in the success or failure of our country, but it's important that together in God we trust. Let me give you a little background to the story before I begin to read the rest of it because the passage is very long and I'm reading just a portion today. But in Genesis 24, Abraham's wife, Sarah, has died and Abraham calls for his chief servant. He realizes his time is growing short. He needs to get a wife for his son Isaac. He doesn't want him to marry any of these Canaanite girls that he's around. What he wants him to do is Go back to his home country, go back to where Abraham was from, and then bring back the life from his clan. And so that's what's going on in this passage. When the servant, he prays all along the way, because he's been given a pretty important task to help bring back a life for his master's son. And as he does that, he gets to the well after a long journey, he gets to the well of the spring, and while he's doing that, Rebecca comes out. Rebecca is a beautiful girl. She's also someone who is uh, ready to serve and to help. And as she's at the well, the servant prays, or at the spring, and the servant prays, and he says, God, please, if she offers me some water, that's great. But if she offers to water my camels as well, then she's the one. Please let the one who offers me that be the one that you want for my master's son. Now, the read from Genesis 24. And beginning with the 34th verse. I am the servant of Abraham, this servant of Hebrews. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and made him a rich man. He has given him flocks of sheep and goats, cattle, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. Sarah, my master's wife, bore him a son when she was old, and my master has given everything he owns to him. Now, he's the servant is talking to Rebecca's hand. My master made me promise with a vow to obey his command. He said, Do not choose a wife for my son from the girls in the land of Canaan. Instead, go to my father's people, to my relatives, and choose a wife for him. And then skipping to the 42nd verse. When I came to the well today, I prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success in what I am doing. Here I am at the well. When a young woman comes out to get water, I will ask her to give me a drink of water from her jar. And if she agrees and also offers to drink water for my camels, may she be the one that you have chosen as the wife for my master's son. Before I had finished my silent prayer, Rebecca came with the water jar on her shoulder and went down to the well to get water. And as she did that, she quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she watered the camels. I asked her, Who is your father? And she answered, My father is Bethuel, son of Amor and Milcah. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms. I knelt down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me straight to my master's relative where I found his daughter for my master's son. And then also beginning with the 58th verse. Uh, I'm going to 
357-2. They answered, let's call the girl and find out what she has to say. It's kind of nice for them to ask her if she would like to be married. So they called Rebecca and they asked, do you want to go with this man? Yes, she answered. So they let Rebecca and her whole family servant go with Abraham's servant and his men. And they gave Rebecca their blessing in these words. May your sister become the mother of millions. May your descendants conquer the cities of their enemies. And then Rebecca and her young women got ready and mounted the camels to go with Abraham's servant. And they all started out. Isaac had come into the wilderness of the well of the we're skipping now to them finding back at home. Isaac had come into the wilderness of the well of the living one who sees him and was staying in the southern part of Canaan. He went out in the early evening to take a walk in the fields and saw camels coming. And when Rebecca saw Isaac, she got down from her camel and asked Abraham's servant, Who is that man walking toward us in the field? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her scarf and covered her face. And the servant told Isaac everything he'd done. And then Isaac brought Rebecca into the tent that his mother Sarah had lived in, and she became his wife. Isaac loved Rebecca, and so he was comforted for the loss of his mother. Word of God for the people of God. <coughs> this is not a story, though, about arranged marriages, as much as it seems weird to most of us today. It still goes on, by the way, but it's not about that. This is a story of everyday people collectively doing their part in helping make sure that God's promises to Abraham would come true. And this is a great lesson for people of faith and the church, and to me, even a nation. And the part of this is, is that through this passage, people are seeking God's will. Even Abraham, who sends his servant, he, he says, go and uh, he sends the chief servant and he's, he's seeking God's will for his son's wife. Pretty important thing to him if he's going to have a legacy at all, a legacy that's promised to him by God. It's good. He's, Isaac's going to have to have a wife and he understands, this servant fully understands the importance of what he's being asked to do and he makes a very solemn vow as a kind of a ceremony that he, they do and then he travels a long way which was not easy in those days and he seeks God's will along the way. He stops and he prays for guidance. And he knows that Isaac is going to need a good wife. And when Rebecca responds positively for his request for water and lodging, he praises God. This servant has been looking, and I think there's a lot the church can learn from this. As a faithful servant of Abraham, we are faithful servants of our God. And as servants of our God, we make vows, don't we? We make vows when we become a Christian. We make vows when we join the church. We make vows when we have our children baptized or when we are baptized. We make vows when we get married. There are a lot of things that we do in our lives where we make vows, solemn promises that we're going to do what God wants us to do. So I begin to ask myself, how do we do that? And are we keeping our vows right now? And if so, great. And if not, can we start? There was a lot of time and hard work in this servant to follow through on this promise. He, he needed to make the time to do the hard work. And we need to make the time to do the hard work of the church. Our schedules may be full, but when the church's mission is in our lives, we have to realize how important it is what we do here. It's not just a social club. We have an important task and mission in the church. We must understand how important it is. And we cannot flippantly go about it. The responsibility is what the church needs. You see, we talk about independence and we talk about all these things in this weekend. There's also responsibilities. There are also people that have done a lot of hard work to make what we enjoy today. When Jesus is our Lord, we are servants of God, first of all. And we need to seek God's will. And that's the first thing I want you to remember. We need to seek God's will through prayer and focus. We Americans are people of action. We like for people to do things. We want to see that being done 
around us. Prayer is one of the best actions we can do. One of the mightiest actions we can do. And we need to seek God's will. And the more we do that, the more we sense what God wants, and the more in tune we are with Him, the more we're going to know and do what God wants us to do. This story seemed to work out well. It's everybody seems to be amiable in this story. Uh, I wonder how we would feel if some stranger showed up and said, I want some of your daughter to go back home. But everybody here was somehow seeking God's will along the way for that family to be even open to this. Listen to the sonnet's prayer of this servant in, in verses 42 through 44. O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will please grant success to the this journey on which I have come, see, I am standing beside this spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water, I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, drink, and I'll draw water from your candles too, let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Just imagine what would happen if all of us would seek God's will more. Seek and serve. If we saw His will in the church, if we saw His will in our personal lives, give the proper time and effort, what could be done? Do we consider ourselves servants of God? Or do we sit and consider God our servants? To fill our every wish and our want. The second thing, though, is we can seek God's will all that we want. But at that point, until we put it into action, until we do our part, there's no way. In this particular passage, the hospitality of Rebecca is so obvious. The Middle Eastern custom was to offer water. Water to drink, water for your feet. That was, that was pretty standard. But for a woman then to go the extra mile and water somebody else's animals, that was, that was the exceptional thing here. She willingly served others, and it spoke well for her. She was not only a pretty on the outside, she was pretty on the inside, too. Our church is known for being welcoming and friendly and hospitable. And that's a good thing. It's something we need to continue. It might be that welcoming, you see, kind of welcome, kind of attracts people that welcome. You see what I mean? The more that we're welcoming, we attract people that enjoy people that welcome others. But it is very important how we feel about God's people when we feel welcome. Hospitality is important. Rebecca showed this, and it's a wonderful legacy for people to go the second mile. And that's what Rebecca did. I know it's not easy for us to do the hard work of serving others, because most of us really want to just take care of ourselves and have as easy and most comfortable life that we can have. But I know that there's hard work in life, and we all know that. We work hard for ourselves, working hard for others. What we find is, is when we do that, that is the joy of life. It's when we serve and love others, love our, serve and love our families, serve and love others out there. And we certainly don't want to be known as selfish people. The scripture says, whoever wishes to be first in the kingdom of God would be the servant of all. We have many fine inspirations of servanthood in our church. Our bereavement committee, the people that bring the food, the grievers, the free bay, the worship team, the choir, the deacons, the section, the staff, the food pantry, the circles, and more. It goes on and on. But this is right. It's right for us to do these things. Each person in this story, Abraham, the servant, Rebecca, her family, Isaac even, accepting this woman. All of this is important in this story. Each person had a role to fill in making sure that Isaac was going back to God. But we have to carry on God's promises to a new generation. And I think that that's very important. Rebecca and her family saw this as the will of God. If you read further in this passage, they, they see it as the will of God that this man would come. We do not know if Rebecca had been looking for a husband. We don't know if she had just been looking for adventure, something different in her life, ready to get out of this town. We don't know all of those motivations. But I'd like to think that she's been praying for God's guidance along the way. And Rebecca's family seemed amazingly open to the idea. Knowing God's will is rarely easy. And 
I want to be clear about that. Knowing God's will is not always an easy thing. But the more we know God, the more we go on His will. The more we will pray, the more we will sense what God wants us to do. The less we do that, of course, the more struggle we're going to have in knowing what God's will is. Ordinary people, though, can make a big difference in life when they seek to follow God's will. And our promise, and God's promise to Abraham to be the father of countless decisions, descendants and generations to come necessitated the rising of some kind of life. And all of these people helped make this possible. And even if they had not done their work, now this is something that I believe, and I want to be clear about that. It's not stated in the scripture. But I believe God would have found a way to fulfill his promises. The difference is, is are we going to be the helpful people in his work or not? Are we going to be a hindrance or are we going to be a helper? And I think that that's what it all comes down to for me because God deserves our best efforts. God has been gracious to us. He has been good to us. And because of that, he deserves our best efforts. So you ask yourself, what am I supposed to do? Well, we constantly let people know what opportunities are there. But we'll continue to do so. And I'll be glad to have that discussion with you. Because it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, you're on your own, a manager or an employee, retired or in school. We're all servants of God. And collectively, seeking God's will in our lives helps us carry on the promise of God to each new generation. So as we seek His will, as we pray for guidance, as we do our part, together we can make a big difference in this world. Really, that's what makes our nation great. That's what makes our world great. That's what makes the church great. And I think it's important for us. And what a great gift it would be if our whole world, our whole country, our whole community, everyone we know would seek the will of God and then do their part. I thank God that He includes us in His ministry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us clear messages. You have shown us inspirational people who have sacrificed and done all that is needed to make sure that your will is done on this earth. God, we pray that your will would be done all the time, but help us to do our part. Help us to be the servants that you call us to be. Help us to seek your will and way each and every day of our lives so that we will be the people that you call us to be. Minister to us, Lord. Before we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing our last song, I want us to know that there are always opportunities just in our hearts to make a new commitment to God, perhaps to do something special in the church. There are always opportunities for you. Let's stand together.
has and you need one for this week, please take one because there are places in town where you really have to have it. And uh, I know it's not everybody's thing, but I want you to feel free to take one with you. And I thank you for all you're doing. Be in prayer for those that are hurting, those that can't be with us, and really it hurts some of those people not to go to worship with us. We look forward to the day when we can worship together again. Now receive God's blessing. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, with you now forever. Amen.